The Marvel Multiverse is home to some of the most powerful and terrifying symbiotes that you could imagine. Welcome back Nerd Squad, it's me Amanda McKnight aka Vampix13. From a god tier carnage to an evil version of Dylan Brock who rules the world, these are the top 10 strongest symbiotes from alternate universes. Who do you find to be the most terrifying of these strong balls of goop? Basically what they are, alien balls of goop. Number 10, Codex. Step into the thrilling reality of Earth 1051, where Dylan's dark side is unleashed, transforming him into the formidable villain known as Codex, a force to be reckoned with. In this reality, Anne Wang becomes Venom instead of Eddie Brock after Peter Parker rejects the symbiote. As time goes on, Venom takes on an armor like appearance and changes their name to Agent Venom. With the Venom symbiote, Anne ends up giving birth to a child, a half human, half symbiote boy named Dylan. However, in this reality, Dylan doesn't become the hero that we know him to be, but instead a villain after falling under the influence of the powerful symbiote god, Null. Under the name of Codex, he seeks to conquer the world, and Anne, as Agent Venom, is one of the heroes who rises up to stop him. But despite their best efforts, Codex proves to be an insurmountable foe, and the fight to save the world becomes an epic battle of good versus evil. And friends, before I move on to our next point on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, be sure to show us you love us by clicking that like. Number 9, Zombie Carnage. Elsa Bloodstone ends up running into the zombified version of Carnage, or what's left of it, in Volume 2 of Marvel Zombies, issue number 2 from 2015. Her and the kid she is traveling with, whom she calls Shut Up, no seriously, that, that's what she calls them, ends up in a trap Carnage has laid out that Elsa referred to as its scab web. Yes, it is as gross as it sounds. This version of the villain has been reduced reduced to just the upper torso and appears to be covered in little blood blisters. It finds itself defeated after its head is removed from its body and used as a projectile by Elsa and its body or its scab web is unleashed but subsequently is set on fire by a man who appears to be Ranger Warren Worthington but is actually a zombie mystique in disguise. Dun dun dun. Well this version of Carnage is defeated here, who knows how many before Elsa arrived had fallen prey to it. Also, I love how it kind of takes like another zombie to take out another zombie, you know what I mean? Number 8. What if the alien costume had possessed Spider-Man? In What If issue number 4, we find out the answer to this question. Here Peter didn't realize until it was too late what his black suit truly was. No longer able to seemingly separate from Venom, Peter remains stuck with the symbiote. Although he attempts to get help, Venom uses its camouflage powers to make them impossible to find. Also taking control of Peter whenever he attempts to contact Black Cat to actually get help. When Venom does end up in a battle with the other heroes, the symbiote jumps ship to Hulk, making it now one of the most powerful symbiotes there is, and leaving Peter drained of life energy. Appearing as a frail old man, Peter would soon pass away, dying of old age once he was abandoned. In another confrontation, Venom once more leaves Hulk for Thor, attempting to bond with him permanently. Even worse, it would take Black Cat's strong convictions and powerful weapon to defeat this alternate version of Venom. Number 7, Venom. One of the alternate versions of Venom is actually also a version of Gwen Stacy. This version of the character hails from the Earth 65 reality, Spider Gwen's home reality. Here for a time, Gwen Stacy, often known as Spider Woman, Spider Gwen, or currently Ghost Spider, bonded with the Venom symbiote. In this reality, the Venom symbiote was created in a lab by Dr. Elsa Brock. It was used to return Gwen's spider-like powers to her through bonding with her. This version of the symbiote is seemingly made up of jelly-like little spiders which can come together and even shapeshift. However, this version of Venom was created based on basically alien spiders. Initially, Gwen attempted to resist the offer to bond with the Venom symbiote because it was offered to her by her enemy, Matt Murdock, who in this reality is a bad guy. I know we're used to Matt Murdock being a good guy, being daredevil and all that stuff, but here, not his deal. Number 6, Aunt May. <laughs> I bet you would never think of Aunt May when it comes to a strongest symbiotes list, but hey, here we are. This version of Aunt May is basically a monster being an alternate version of the character from Earth 616, but also an alternate of technically another alternate, Aunt May Spider-Man. When encountering this alternate version of herself, Spider-Man, Earth 3123's Aunt May, and Miles Morales of the Ultimate Universe, 1610, must team up to take on this alternate Aunt May version of Carnage. Carnage May and her Earth's Peter and Uncle Ben work together trying to basically take out their other characters 
counterparts across the multiverse, as they believe the existence of the multiverse proves that nothing really matters. That's how they see it anyways. They are a force of chaos and death, and this version of Carnage is so deadly that she actually proves to be too much for Miles and Spider-Man alone. Number 5. Edward Sachs Edward Sachs is a little bit higher up because of just how terrifyingly massive and evil he is. This version of Venom has taken up a job in politics and appears in the Spider-Man Reign story as the aide to the mayor of New York, who here is Mayor Waters. He hails from Earth the 70237. Edward Sachs, as he is referred to though, appears to actually be the one who is pulling the mayor's strings and seems to have more control than most aides over what goes on in the city of New York. He has also been working to bring back the Sinister Six. Oh boy. He also made thousands of copies of the Venom symbiote and is responsible for Web, a security group responsible for preventing anyone from leaving the city. It's a very dystopian, dark reality, Spider Man Rain. <laughs> so if you want to be a little bit depressed, go check that out. Number four, Ultimate Venom. There are a couple different versions of Ultimate Venom on the Earth of 1610 the Conrad Marcus version and the Eddie Brock Jr. version. This alternate version of the Venom symbiote was created to be a cure for cancer, as opposed to being an alien entity from outer space, and as such, its healing and regenerative properties supersede even the Earth 616 version. Like in the Tom Hardy Venom verse, however, this suit can only bond with specific people, and if it isn't compatible with you, it'll kill you. This gigantic powerhouse of a symbiote has been shown to be stronger than both Miles Morales and Peter Parker of Earth 616 combined. Number 3, Grendel Symbiote. While this is still technically Cletus Cassidy as Carnage from Earth 616, some may consider the Grendel Symbiote to be a different version of Carnage altogether since the Carnage Symbiote itself at this point in the story is kind of dead and gone. And honestly, so is Cletus. He's basically a corpse that was revived and then like kind of stuffed inside a symbiote. He still has a consciousness and everything, but I'm not sure if we'd quite call him alive here. This version of Carnage is probably one of the most horrifying when you consider its purpose. The Grendel symbiote takes the place of Carnage and is used by Cletus to basically hunt down all the codices on Earth, which exist inside former hosts of symbiote spines. I think you can imagine how that kind of goes when you need to get those get those codices. Acquiring the codices bolstered his own power and ultimately allowed him to achieve his main goal of waking up the god of the symbiotes. No. Number two, God of Carnage, or the Carnage God, or God of Carnage is kind of like the story involving this character. God of Carnage technically hails from Earth 616 as well, but honestly extends beyond that in terms of how far the entities reaches, I would say. It is an offshoot of Carnage, but basically answers the question of what happens when Carnage decides to ditch Cletus Cassidy. Honestly, the God of Carnage, or the Carnage God, while technically an incarnation of Carnage, is like the Grendel symbol. Symbiote version, so far removed from the original version of this symbiote that it's even hard to really consider them one in the same being, save for appearance and I suppose their shared kind of chaotic alignment. The Carnage God wields the All Blood, his own God Butcher weapon, an alternate version of the All Black Necrosword. This alternate version of Carnage is also very different in the fact that it doesn't have a host. At this point, seeing hosts as a distraction from its own purpose and plans, who were basically previously holding Carnage back, so they don't mess with hosts no more. Number 1. Carnage Cosmic There was a time when Carnage actually ended up going cosmic in terms of his power source and level. The Carnage symbiote at one point jumped ship to Norrin Rad, one of the Heralds of Galactus. While in the main continuity, the bond between them did not last, there is a what if comic that imagines what could have happened had the bond between them remained. In the end, in this alternate reality, in order to prevent Carnage from having too much power and control over him, the Silver Surfer regains control for long enough just to hurl his himself, along with Carnage, into the sun. However, apparently that wasn't actually the end as somehow the two survived this, reappearing again in the 2013 comic Longshot Saves the Marvel Universe issue number 3, probably honestly thanks to the Silver Surfer's powers, not necessarily the powers of Carnage since the symbiote is like very susceptible to fire damage. So you'd think going to the sun, you'd think that'd be it, but apparently not. Apparently not. That's about it. Until next time, you stay nerdy YouTube. Bye!